The number one principle is knowing that you have a choice about everything that you do. It is. And even if you're like, yeah, but this, 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 this. No, that is your choice that you're thinking like that. So you really have a choice whether you want to be healthy. And if you're choosing not to be, that's, you know, that's up to you. But when you have that choice inside you and you know that you have complete control, you're actually free. Hey everybody, Dr. Axe here. Hey, so excited to be on another podcast today. I'm going to be interviewing Rebecca Luis and really excited about today's podcast. She is from uh, a small town in England called Eastbourne and uh, she now lives in California and she's got a fantastic app called Burn. She's a fitness expert. I and mean, if you go online and follow her on Instagram, you'll be blown away with her amazing fitness content. We're also going to talk about uh, some deep things today. We're going to talk about mood disorders, things like anorexia, and also how to take your fitness and nutrition to the next level. Uh, Rebecca, hey, great to have you on the podcast today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Great. Well, let's go and dive in. You know, the first question I would love to learn from you and ask about is, Give us your background and your history. Again, I know that there were, you know, you had struggles with eating disorders, but tell me about that journey and then also how that brought you into, you know, building an amazing brand and teaching people about fitness and nutrition like you do today. Thank you. Well, yeah, I grew up in a small town in England called Eastbourne. I played so many sports. I was in all the sports teams that you can imagine. I was a trained dancer. And when I got to the age of around 15, 16, I changed to a different school. And I was around a new group of friends that weren't particularly that I guess empowering or exciting and supportive. And the one thing that I could control was food. And unfortunately, instead of you know, trying to give my body good nutrition, I started to control food by not eating anything at all. And I was working out all the time, but I wasn't eating any food. And at the age of 17, I was going to the doctors regularly and they were weighing me and they were saying, you know, you've lost more weight, you know, you need to try and put on weight. And in my head, I was saying, yes, but to them, I was like, oh no, this is really bad, right? But it was the story that I was telling myself that being anorexic and being thin uh, was what I wanted. It was also the full, you know, the 90s where it was all the craze size zero. So that was a big thing in the media was being thin, was attractive, was that was what was sexy. So I was 17 years old, five foot two, and I was 86 pounds. Wow. Um, I'm 107, 108 pounds right now. So you know, even just thinking of myself as 20 pounds lighter and I'm small anyway, um, it's, uh, it's crazy. But uh, my skin was bad. I didn't have any energy. My hair was falling out. And it really took a toll on my life. I basically was a recluse. I would stay inside. I would just work from the library at school. I didn't want to be around other people. Um, and I left home at 19 years old, started working in London. And I never still, I didn't eat properly. I was like anything in a bowl, basically. I mean, you're talking like cereal, soup, rice, anything that was in a bowl that was easy because I'm not a great cook. That was what I was eating. Um, and it wasn't until I came to California that I started to film workout videos on YouTube. And even then I still wasn't eating properly. And I would even use jugs as a supplement to stop me from feeling hungry. Like I've been on antidepressants before and they obviously stop you from feeling hungry sometimes or it could do the reverse effect. So I would use that. Um, I've used other recreational drugs as well because that would also suppress your appetite. And I thought that that would give me energy and I thought that that would make me happy and I thought that that would make me thin as well. But you know what the reality is, is that when I found a nutrition plan about seven years ago that taught me having a healthy breakfast, feeling my body good nutrition, that was going to get me results and that was going to get me energy, I started to feel much better. And when I was able to transform my own body, um, actually gain lean muscle, gain energy, and I've created more workouts for people online, more nutrition plans. It really was the big change for me mentally because I don't think that mentally that I was very strong because of what I was feeding my body. So it's been a real journey for me. Um, I helped my mum lose 42 pounds and she's five foot one. So that was like a big thing where it went from my head to my heart. And I was like, I need to help more people. And I think I just wake up every day with a purpose to get people to move their bodies and eat healthy food. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. Well, I mean, what, what an amazing story of being just an overcomer. You know, one of the things I guess I would ask you with that too is, what, what, what is it that motivates you and drives you? I, I see this with a lot of people. In fact, I would say the number one reason why people 
can't follow, you know, don't exercise for one or to a degree don't, don't eat healthy is they, they're, they're not motivated or inspired to do so. So what is it that motivates and, and drives you? I think I'm so addicted to the feeling and the rush that you get after you do a workout. You know, you feel, you get adrenaline that releases those happy endorphins. Like I know how much better I am as a human being once I've had a workout. You know, it's kind of like if you're hangry, right? If you haven't eaten anything, you start to get a bit irritated with other people. It's kind of like when you haven't worked out, you haven't released any stress, you haven't, you know, released all of those endorphins. And I think I'm just addicted to feeling amazing. I know how bad I felt before and now I'm actually exercising and I'm feeding my body good nutrition I feel so great so it's the action that actually has given me more motivation I don't think that you just become motivated um, I think that the action is what gets you motivated and then when you're motivated you take more action and then when you take more action you get more motivated and you if you become in this this cycle and this good habits then it's easier to just to keep going it's when you skip a day and then you skip another day and then you eat an unhealthy food that you feel like you can't get yourself back where really you just need to start moving your body and and have one healthy meal and you're going to start to feel better and get addicted to that feeling you know i what you're saying too it makes me think of this is there's a principle that uh chelsea and i both together <laughs> read a book recently it was called keep your love on but a big part of the book the principle was you know what, like you aren't, um, like TV is so wrong today in some of their principles about you don't fall in love. Like you don't, like love is a choice. It doesn't happen to you. You're not a victim. Oh, love. Oh, I fell out of love. It's you no, know, like Chelsea and I wake up every day and we choose to love each other. We choose to serve each other. We choose to, you know, not get mad at each other for that, like silly thing. Me living the dish in the dishwasher. So yeah, or in the, in the sink and not putting in the dishwasher, those types of things. So anyways, all that being said, it makes me, th because here's the thing is people are choosing that. And I think people also think if I don't feel like doing it, um, I'm never going to feel like doing it. But I think the more that you do something good, as you're saying, the more you're kind to people, the more that you exercise, the more that you eat right, the more you become addicted to it, the more you start to do it and you realize, no, this is the best way to live. Anyways, I, I love that principle. So good. I love the, the choice principle for me is the most important. I have a book coming out in September called It Takes Grit. And the number one principle is knowing that you have a choice about everything that you do. It is. And even if you're like, yeah, but this, 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 no, that is your choice that you're thinking like that. So you really have a choice whether you want to be healthy. And if you're choosing not to be, that's, you know, that's up to you. But when you have that choice inside you and you know that you have complete control, you're actually free. Knowing you have a choice means that you are free. You haven't got anything that's resting on your shoulders. Um, so I love that principle. And, you know, I have chosen the wrong things in the past to help me what I thought would help. But I know now, like the choices that if I make them today, how it's going to affect me tomorrow. So I'm just very clear and precise about making the right choices. Man, it's so powerful because, you know, our system today, society kind of says you're a victim. Like, for instance, Hey, you're a diabetic and you always are going to be a diabetic. When I know I've seen hundreds of people, if not thousands, reverse their diabetes and vice versa. Or, hey, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm like this. I can't change. You can, you have the power. I love that. Tell me about your nutritional philosophy, Rebecca, because you're obviously a person that's passionate about food. You're a passionate person, generally speaking, but I know you also love food. I've been on your website. I want to encourage everybody, check out Rebecca's website. It's just Rebecca-Louise.com. And, um, but you've got some great, you know, great recipes on here. I love the one. You got some great five healthy pumpkin recipes, healthy snacks, easy meals. Talk to me about though, generally speaking, what is your food or diet philosophy and how do you eat? So I think I've had a, a massive transformation in, in the way that I've eaten because, you know, before I've, I would do bowls of cereal, bowls of soup. Um, I was in the party industry for a long time. So a lot of cocaine was part of my diet for, for a time, if I'm being completely honest, and thinking that that was going to give me results and that was going to give me energy. Um, however, that's not sustainable forever. And I wanted to find something that fit for me. So, you know, we spoke about this in the podcast that uh, Dr. Axe was on with, with mine, It Takes Grit. And everybody has a specific different nutrition plan that might work for them. For me, I found that balanced, healthy nutrition was something that I was going to stick to forever. 
I'm not a fan of a fad diet or something that people can do for two weeks. Um, whatever you want to do is great. It, live your life, do whatever you want to do. But you have to ask yourself, is this something that I can sustain? So for me, I eat six meals a day. I have a healthy breakfast shake in the morning. Um, I have lunch that consists of protein, vegetables, ca uh, carbohydrates. My dinner is very similar. And then I have three protein snacks throughout the day. Um, and I use supplements as well. I use a pre post workout. Um, I use a collagen. I use some extra vitamins and minerals that help me get my my nutrients in throughout the day. Water. I'm still struggling to drink as much water as I need because I know that that is so important. But we've always got something that we are working on. So if you're listening out there and you're like, I'm not always doing something exactly right, or I'm not doing it perfectly, it's okay as long as you're doing your best and you're aware of it. Um, so my my thing is all about balance. It's balanced nutrition. I'm a pescatarian. Um, I stopped eating meat about a year ago, um, not for any diet reasons, just I just didn't want to eat meat anymore. Um, I still eat fish. Um, my boyfriend goes and catches loads of fish off the coast of uh, Mexico, so my, my fish is always super fresh. Um, but yeah, I just make sure that all the food that I'm buying is as organic as it can be. Um, and I get a lot of my meals delivered to me as well because I'm not the best cook. Uh, so if I don't have food in the kitchen or food in the, in the fridge, I know that, um, you know, I'm not going to be able to stick on my nutrition plan. So preparing for me is the most important. Um, I'll snack throughout the day, but all my snacks consist of protein. So um, I'll be having like cottage cheese, uh, a protein bar like once in a while, but honestly, I'm not a massive fan of them eating them every single day um, and just getting lean protein in. Um, so yeah, it's all about like balanced, healthy nutrition. I don't have like, I don't not eat from a certain period of time. Um, I do have cheat foods. I don't have cheat days or cheat meals. Um, the only thing that I will eat that's probably not the best for you is chocolate. I'm from England, so Cadbury's chocolate's amazing. You guys have Hershey's in America, so I understand if you're not addicted to chocolate, it's just not the same as Cadbury's. Um, but I will have a couple of, you know, um, chocolate throughout the day, maybe like one or two mini eggs that I'm having right now, but I don't really drink alcohol. I eat really clean. So I feel like just a few pieces of chocolate um, isn't going to kill me. <laughs> wow. Share this with me. What are the biggest foods that you stay away from that you found is, is you, cause I know you've coached some people and helped some people on their fitness and their diet plans. What are some foods you just let people know? These are the big things you got to stay away from, especially when you're trying to be fit. I think the biggest things to stay away from that for I teach my clients is like is the starchy kind of carbohydrate. So a lot of bread, um, you know, people like white bread, they're having maybe toast in the morning, then they're getting some bread at lunchtime, they're dipping it in some balsamic vinegar, they're dipping it in something else. Uh, bread, if you're going out for dinner, it's like choose if you want the bread at the beginning or the dessert at the end, like mm, don't have both. It's, it's like just make a choice, like have one thing. Um, I, you know, alcohol, it's, it's the, you know, I do suggest if you are serious about getting results, for me, it really slows down my metabolism. I get insane results when I have not drank alcohol. Um, I stopped drinking alcohol uh, December 2019. I tried it for 30 days. I thought, how could I get through this? I was able to get through a trip to Cabo, Christmas and New Year's Eve. I was like, this is actually not that difficult. And I feel so much better for not drinking alcohol. Um, I will drink a glass once in a while. I might have had three drinks since, you know, in, in six months, uh, four months. Um, so alcohol is a big thing to step away from if it is, um, if you want results fast. Any fast food, I mean, fast food, there's a reason that it is that cheap. It's because it's not good for you. Um, it's going to block up your digestive system. Um, and really like any foods that, you know, cake, it sounds like so simple, but I get people that send me pictures of what they've eaten and I'm like, yeah, cake is not good for you. Like cookies, donuts, um, all the things that are not fresh basically um, are going to have an impact on your results. So you mentioned Cadbury earlier. Outside of that, what is your favorite cheat food? Or let me, let me, let me rephrase it. Let me ask this. If you are, well, now answer that and then I have a follow-up question. Okay. So my other favorite one is truffle fries. And they have to be very specific. It's not wow. just French fries. So if you've got me some truffle fries and some Cadbury's chocolate, like, you know, but that's once in a while. <laughs> if there was a fast food restaurant that was somehow healthy, like you, you could eat it, but it was actually healthy, what would be your fast food restaurant of choice? 
Oh, that is interesting. You know what? I haven't had fast food for so long because I literally don't even like the taste of it. When I lived in England, we have an amazing Domino's pizza in England is different to the American one. Okay. Um, so I was very disappointed. Well, I'm really slating American food right now. I don't mean to be doing this with the chocolate and the Domino's pizza. But yes, I used to, uh, I used to love a good British Domino's pizza. That would probably be um, my favorite. Wow. Love that. Okay. So one of the other things I've noticed is I've, you know, uh, jumped on your site and checked out your Instagram and some of the places you've been is you travel. I go to, you know, you've, you've traveled some great places. What are three of the top places and why that you think, man, everybody should visit this place. It's incredible. And why? Yeah, I've been to 40 different countries. So it's been, uh, it's really exciting. I absolutely love to travel. Um, I just got back from South Africa. And um, we actually have some workout videos that are coming out in April 2020 that I was shooting workout videos in front of lions and tigers. Um, so it's pretty wow. incredible. They're at a sanctuary. They're at a sanctuary that rescues lions and tigers and all sorts of big cats from people who have um, got animals, kept animals in captivity. So bad zoos, people's pets, or maybe they've been, um, you know, in a, an environment where it's not been healthy for them. And there's an amazing uh, sanctuary called Lions Rock in South Africa, part of a uh, Four Paws charity that rescues these lions and tigers and brings wow. them over to a sanctuary. So we were literally filming workout videos a couple of feet in front of, uh, in front of these lions. And it was, uh, it was a very interesting experience. It was amazing just to bring awareness. So I went to South Africa, definitely do, um, you know, a safari there. Also went to Camps Bay as well, which was beautiful. Uh, a couple of years ago, I went to Iceland. I really highly recommend Iceland as well. There's amazing hikes if you like activity, um, incredible waterfalls, just amazing scenic just to get outside. Um, and then I think the last place I would say is if you want to do more med mellow, kind of relaxing, is the Maldives. Um, there's an atmosphere that is amazing. The food is great. The people are lovely. Um, and I've just had an amazing time visiting there. I think I've been there twice now. Now, how about in Europe? What, are you, what, what is your favorite spot in Europe? Oh, my favorite spot. I mean, obviously, I'm going to be biased because England has got some incredible locations. Um, but I was in uh, the Alps last year. I was doing some climbing because I was actually meant to be going to Mount Everest in May. Um, which obviously I'm not happening now due to the coronavirus. And so I was uh, out climbing in the Alps, Switzerland, France, Italy, uh, did some wine tours in Tuscany as well before I stopped drinking. Um, but yeah, that was an amazing experience uh, to be going over to there as well and, and just practicing doing some climbing. I went to Ecuador as well in January to do some practice climbing, uh, got up to about 21,000 feet. So that was pretty exciting. And Obviously now I was training for Everest, um, but that has been postponed. Oh man. Well, I know Chelsea and I love you. By the way, we love London. We had a, uh, we went there about a year and a half ago and had an absolute blast. What a, fan, what a fun city. And then of course we love Italy. I mean, Florence, you know, Amalfi Coast, Cinque Terre. I mean, it, you know, just to me, like my, my wife, Chelsea and I, we are both big foodies. And so Italy to us had the best food. And then actually London, you know, there was some really good, really good food in London. In fact, I don't think when we went over there, we thought, no offense, like, like we didn't think like London would be one of our favorite cities. We thought it maybe be Paris or to be honest, like Paris, like we had, it's just some of the people there are just tough to deal with. But mm -hmm. um, anyways, all that being said, like we loved London. In fact, we said if we were going to live in Europe, we would probably choose London because we just felt like it was just such a, Man, just a, such a great area. So many different things to do. So many different types of restaurants. It was really a, uh, a fun city. So anyways, bravo there. Let's talk about some fitness, okay? What is your fitness philosophy? What, what, what do you think, and generally speaking, if somebody wants to get results as well, let's start off with fitness philosophy, and then I, I'd love you to kind of parlay into what do you think the best form of fitness is for people to see results quickly if that's their goal? I get asked this all the time. It's like, what's the best workout to do? And honestly, if you love a workout, do that because that's yeah. the one that you're more likely to do. Yeah. So to give somebody confidence and to actually get someone to have results, I'm like, what workout do you love to do? They'll tell me, I'll be like, just do that because they're more likely to do it. So if you're out there and you're like, oh, everybody says that like strength training is so great and then I get to it and I don't want to do it, but I really love going to yoga and then I'm not doing anything. It's like, just do what you love. How I do it is I want to get a full, you know, 
fitness, overall fitness. So in the Burn app that I have, my fitness app, we have days that are yoga, hit, body weight, heavyweight exercises, cardio, kickboxing, Pilates. I mean, I do the whole thing because I want you to improve your flexibility. I want you to improve your strength, um, your core. We do ab workouts, leg workouts. I mean, and everything is split up so that you're not working the same body part because you also need rest. Uh, so I really feel like giving yourself an overall fitness to build your cardiovascular system when you're doing cardio, you know, to as we get older, we lose our flexibility. So you need to do yoga exercises. We need to do stretching. Um, so that's what I like to do. I think it keeps exciting. I think it keeps it interesting. I think it gives you an overall fitness. You know, sometimes you see a lot of these bodybuilders and they are super jacked and they've got huge muscles, but they can't run a mile and they can't touch their toes. It's like... That's not very good for your heart and that's not mm. very good for your core stability. So I really feel like it needs to be a balance of everything um, to give you the best overall fitness. Yeah, I love that too. And one of the things that's so great about your app is that, you know, you go on there and you kind of get to pick on what you kind of get to pick what you feel like doing like that day. And that's what I'd encourage people to do. As you're saying is, Hey, if you feel like doing kickboxing that day, do that. If you feel like doing yoga that day, do that. If you feel like doing body weight training, you feel like doing cardio, do that. But it's such a good point. I think for most people, it's like, hey, I feel like I have to run for an hour or I have to weight lift for an hour and a half. And it's like, no, you can do 15 minutes a day and actually see results like that. So, and the app is Burn. Mm -hmm. It's called Burn by Rebecca Louise. Um, and yeah, you get a daily workout on there or you can mix it up and choose something from the library. So you literally just open up the date and it will tell you the workout to do that day. So it's already in a calendar for you. So it makes it super simple. Um, and just to touch on that point, you know, about, you know, you can do exercise for an hour. I used to run on the treadmill for an hour. And then afterwards I would go and eat some sweets because I thought like, well, I just burnt loads of calories. I deserve to have a treat. When you're like, you've just done all that work. You don't want to just cancel it out by eating something bad so you know i always make sure that i have protein after i've worked out that's what's you know the building blocks of your muscles um and so just just doing a treadmill for an hour isn't as necessarily as effective as doing a really hard intense workout with some weights for 20 minutes and then you've saved yourself 40 minutes <laughs> yeah yeah i love that well one of the questions i'd have for you too is i think that there's a, quite a few women out there who maybe have a fear of weights or doing weight training so but you know i look out there and i look at you know Jennifer Lopez, Jennifer Garner, all the Jennifer, Jennifer Aniston, you know, uh, maybe Carrie Underwood. Like I know, you know, I've seen their fitness routines and they incorporate weights. And so talk to me about what you've seen in terms of, and you're very lean. Like, do, do you do weights? How often do you do them? What, what should you, what should women know about lifting weights? Yeah, and I can completely sympathize with this because before I started doing any weight training, I would be like, oh my goodness, like I'm gonna wake up the next morning, I'm gonna look like the Incredible Hulk. I don't wanna get, I don't wanna look manly, I don't wanna look buff, you know? And you know what? It actually takes a lot of work lifting seriously heavy weights and eating a ton of food to get like that. Like it's not an easy thing. And plus, by the way, picking up something heavy, putting it down, you don't just wake up and you're like, oh my goodness, look at my glutes, they're already like huge, right? I would Wish it was that easy but it's really not um, so I do do a lot of weight exercises. So if I'm doing, you know, a home workout, I'm doing deadlifts, I'm doing 25 pounds in each hand, like easily. Um, I, when I have, I have a trainer that I would go to and we managed to get a hip thrust up to 355 pounds. Um, so that's almost three times my body weight. So 355 pounds, just think about that. That's what I was able to max out on a, on a hip thrust. That didn't make me look big. It didn't make me look bulky. Um, and it really, does take a long time for your muscles to to grow to get bigger so you can look at yourself look at yourself in the mirror and say hey Ad, do I like how I look? Do I want to get a bit stronger? Do I want to get some more muscles? Great. Keep increasing the weight. And what a lot of people do is they've been using the same weight for years yeah. and they've been using two or three pounds. Girls, pick up something heavier, please, <laughs> than two or three pounds. That's like, it's not going to do anything. And if you've been using the same weight, I would say for the last month, like, you know, don't even go over six weeks. You want to be using something heavier um, to, to really like, you know, not not hit a plateau and to build strength because if you're you know your muscles are stronger your bones are going to be stronger uh you're going to be overall more toned so do not be afraid of picking up weights and guess what if you feel like hey i've, I've 
I've got really muscly. I don't quite like this. Just drop the weight down again. But it's not going to happen overnight. I wish it did. Uh, but it really is not that easy. So, you know, give yourself a go, get some heavier weights um, and, and make it happen. Yeah, it's great advice. And I've hardly ever seen it happen where, let me say, it's less than 1% of the time where, uh, you know, a, a female starts lifting weights and they say, oh, I'm getting too bulky now. It just doesn't, it doesn't ever happen unless you're lifting for years and years and years. Uh, it just, it just doesn't happen. So again, I, I love that balance of, hey, weight train, get some hit, hit in and then do the things you love. I mean, that's such a big part of the message I know too. do what you love and you can keep doing over time. Talk to me about supplements. Are you, you know, do you take supplements? What's part of your personal supplement regime if you do take supplements? Yeah, I've taken supplements for the last seven years, um, six and a half, seven years. Um, I'd never really taken anything before. I'd had a couple of protein shakes that were in my cupboard, but I never really knew how to use them. Um, so I actually have a healthy smoothie for breakfast that is made from um, a nutrition company that you just mix it together with water because before I was having cereal, I was having toast, and obviously that is not the best thing to maintain your blood sugar level. So I have that for breakfast in the morning. I have some additional aloe that that helps with digestion. I use a pre-workout, um, I use a post-workout, I use BCAAs during my workout. Um, I'll have some immunity booster supplements as well um, and multivitamin and some omega-3. So I just feel that it helps with my skin. I know that I'm getting my daily nutrition in. Um, I have more energy and I feel better um, knowing that I'm getting all this nutrition in. I'm also crazy busy and sometimes I'm literally going like today, I was working out and I had 20 minutes until I was on a podcast. So I'm like, the only thing that I'm getting right now is a shake. And if I didn't have that available, I probably wouldn't get it into my system. So I feel like it's better to get the nutrients in than not eating um, anything at all or snacking on something that's not great for you. So yep, I love supplements. I enjoy them. They taste great. So, and I love the results that comes with it. There's no doubt that, you know, for myself, I've been doing a shake now I don't do it every morning, but you know, five out of seven mornings, I do a, I do a shake and I've done that for 15 years, 20 years for a long time. And I'll tell you, there's something about just doing a shake that's for me, I always do a collagen smoothie. I do berries, I do coconut or almond milk and do some collagen protein. And that's, and I feel great. I mean, I feel honestly, if I do other things now, I kind of feel a little bit heavy. Sometimes on the weekends, Chelsea and I'll make like healthy pancakes or waffles or do egg omelets like that sort of thing but outside of the weekends it's it's a shake so i'm in agreement i to to totally with you there so you know as we as we kind of close up here what one of the other things i've noticed is i have uh you know uh, just met you now and just kind of learned about you over the past several months is you you're successful you know you've started a successful business you have your own app you have a successful website successful Instagram page. What do you think are the top characteristics it takes for someone to be successful? Because we probably have some people on here listening that are entrepreneurs or maybe they, they blog or write or trying to grow their Instagram accounts, that sort of thing. What do you think are the top principles that have allowed you to succeed? I think the biggest thing in succeeding in business and anything, even if it's results, is, no, is, is having grit. It's having grit and determination. I've mm. never had a plan B. There isn't like, what if this doesn't work? It's like, this has to work because this is what I love to do and this is what's going to happen. I mean, you know, having your own app, I own 100% of my business, so everything is on me. I don't have a partner. I don't have like a boyfriend or a husband that like does this with me. Like all the responsibility is on me. But I feel like if you just serve one person, you're going to hold yourself responsible for, for serving that person to continue. You can't just quit on them. There is no way that I would be able to quit now. Or oh, even, you know, five years ago when I started making YouTube videos because people depended on me. So as soon as you start getting a couple of clients, like you need to start switching your mindset to going, hey, this isn't about me anymore. This is about the people that I've en enrolled. So you can't just quit on them. And that is going to take grit. It's going to take endurance. And it's going to take knowing that so many things are going to try and knock you down. I have been through, I don't know, five, six different app developers that said that they could do the job and then couldn't. Mm -hmm. It would be very easy for me to say, you know what? This isn't working. I can't do it. I can't face it. I just look at the solution. I'm incredibly solution oriented. It's like, okay, what is the problem that's just happened? How can we fix it? 
it's, I'm kind of like a man in that respect, right? Men just want to fix something straight away. So I take full responsibility for everything that's happened. Therefore, I can't blame anybody else. So even the other day, we had an issue where our app was, you know, doing a year ago, sorry, where the app was doing something that it shouldn't be doing. I'm like, this is my, my, my responsibility. I need to look at this and I need to make sure that I have the right team around me. So when you're starting a business and you're starting to get momentum, it's like you can't have a plan B. If you go, well, if this doesn't work, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z because then it will never work. You have to be all in. And when you have those couple of clients that start coming in and they're seeing value from what you're providing, then you have that mindset switch of, okay, I now need to make sure that I'm serving these people. How can I make it better for them? Um, and just know that you're going to get knocked down. I mean, my business, like I could write a book personally on just the business, what's happened to it, um, on everything that just happens in your life. It's like the universe comes along, it gives you a test, it tries to knock you down and you get to say, I'm going to pass this test. Um, and I think if you want to set up a business, you have to know and expect that everything is going to go wrong at one point. And sometimes it might go wrong three or four times, and that's totally normal. Um, and it's just going to separate you from the people who aren't going to make it. And um, I do really feel that it is easy to be successful because so many people have already taught us how to do it. And as long as you don't give up, you can get there because people just don't want to do the bare minimum of what it takes to create a business. So so if you're on social media, guess what? You have to post every day. You have to do stories. You have to get comfortable mm -hmm. with being in front of the camera. It's easy because it's been told what to do. But that's why most people fail is that they just don't do the bare minimums of what they need to do to make a business. So it's exciting. It's exhausting. It's rewarding. Um, it can really test you. Um, it tests your character. Um, I've had to grow up real fast uh, because I now manage a team. I've got people all over the world that work remotely with me. Um, and you know, it's, uh, you just got to have some serious grit and know that you're going to got to keep on going no matter what happens. I love that. So fantastic. Grit, determination. Uh, I mean, that's what it takes. It's what it takes to succeed in business, in life, in your fitness and health. Man, so good. I want to say thanks Rebecca for coming on today. I want to encourage you guys check out Rebecca's app. It's called burn. So many great fitness things on there from workouts for weight training, yoga, body weight exercises, you name it, it's on there. So again, check it out, Burn. Also, hey, check out our website. It's Rebecca-Louise. And um, check out on Instagram, at Rebecca Louise. You can find her on Instagram there as well. Phenomenal page if you want to learn more about fitness and nutrition. I want to say, Rebecca, hey, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. I'll be back next week with another episode here. Uh, thanks for joining us today. This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed in this podcast are not medical advice and have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. In some cases, individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein. 